Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's me Andy and a few weeks ago I made a video about how not to be a terrible flight attendant and I think a few of you guys enjoyed it. So today I wanted to make one about how not to be a terrible fellow passenger. If you guys follow a page called Passenger Shaming, they're a little bit more abrupt with the tips they give on how not to be a terrible flight attendant. But today I'm going to do it the nice way and just give you some tips for your next flight on how not to annoy your fellow passengers and the crew on board your next flight. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Andy and I'm a 26 year old flight attendant based in Johannesburg, South Africa. I make lots of travel tips videos, videos about being a flight attendant and yeah, just um, also trying to get a hold of this whole adulting thing, hey? So if you enjoy my content, please give this video a thumbs up, check out some of my other videos and hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. So let's get into this list because I've got quite a few tips. <laughs> My first tip on how not to be a terrible passenger is do not block the aisle. This is something I've pretty much spoken about in every one of my passenger tips videos, but try not to waste time standing in the aisle grabbing things out of your bag or if you see that people are coming towards you, don't like get up and start taking things out of your bag or whatever. And especially if the crew are doing a service, don't go stand behind them and ask to go use the toilet. Guys, you've got like a good 10 minutes before they start their service to go to the toilet. You've got boarding to go to the toilet and all that stuff. So please try to be respectful. Try to remember that there are other people on this flight, whether it's the crew trying to do their job or just other passengers trying to have a good flight. Please just be more mindful of what's going on around you. My second tip on avoiding being a terrible passenger is to not watch videos and movies or listen to music without earphones or headphones. It's really annoying to be sitting next to someone and they're listening to a random YouTube video or whatever rapper they're listening to on their phone and it's on really, really loudly. They're not even using their earphones and I'm just trying to take a nap. <laughs> like, you know, it, it's really, really annoying and a lot of passengers won't say anything just because they're trying to get through their day without getting into a confrontation. But, you know, if you are just a thoughtful, normal human being, you wouldn't do that. Tip number three is sleeping on your fellow passenger. That's a no-no. Yeah, I've had it before when I was flying down from Chad and this passenger had had a bit too much to drink and he was getting super sleepy and he, he happened to be in the middle seat so he put his head on my shoulder and I was like, nah, -uh, bruh, like that's not happening, like personal space, like I'm already in like a tin can with you, this is not on. You know, and he also did it to the guy next to him. Granted, he was in the middle seat, he was really tired, he just wanted to sleep and he was very, very uncomfortable, so I do feel bad for him. But at the end of the day, you know, personal space is personal space. Number four, please do not take your shoes off. Don't take your shoes off. There is nowhere in the world where it is okay to take your shoes off on an airplane. Don't take your shoes off and walk around the airplane. Don't take your shoes off and go to the bathroom. Like, just don't, just don't do it. Just don't take your shoes off. I had my flight from Amsterdam coming back to South Africa. The man next to me took his shoes off. It was so bad and I had the window seat and it was a full flight and I couldn't move. So yeah. That's what happened. So please just don't do it to anyone else. It's really, really uncomfortable. Like no one wants to be mean and say, please put your shoes back on because your feet stink, you know? So just don't do that. Just, just don't do that. Number five, keep your feet to yourself. Do not put your feet on the seat in front of you. Please, I beg of you. And do not put your feet up on the bulkhead. You think that the person in the seat in front of you won't notice, but trust me, they notice. You can feel when someone's feet are like on the back of your seat. You can see them when they're on your armrest. Like it's disgusting. No one wants to be near feet that much. Like no, no, just don't. Please. Number six is to keep your in-flight necessities near you. I have made tips about this to parents flying with their kids, but also just in general. Try to keep the things that you really, really need during the flight closest to you. What I always do is I will have my cabin bag suitcase and a backpack when I travel. 
So my suitcase will go up into the overhead stowage and my backpack, which has everything I need to entertain me during the flight, like headphones and my neck pillow and some snacks and a book to read, whatever I might need, a pair of socks, whatever. I'll keep that in the backpack and put it in the seat under the seat in front of me so that it's always near me for you know if I need if I need to grab it because chances are I'm gonna be sitting by the window and I don't want to have to ask the people next to me to get up every time I want to grab something out of my bag. The next tip is to give the middle seat passenger the armrests. I know it's a little bit of a debate as to who the armrests go to. <laughs> it's funny. But I am a strong believer that the armrests in the middle go to the person in the middle. They don't get a window to lean against. They don't have the aisle seat and they don't have the freedom to just get up whenever they want to. So the least you can do is just give that person the armrests. It is just a nice thing to do. Tip number eight is if you are in the second to last row, please don't recline your seat at all, just don't do it because if you think about it, the person in the last row is sitting directly in front of a bulkhead and they can't push their chair back any more than what it is as it is upright. So if you push your seat all the way back, you're gonna be like here for them and they can't do anything about it. They can't move their seat back. They can't escape that. So it's really, really unfair. Please just have a little bit of situational awareness check like you know what's going on around you just so that you're aware they're like oh this guy can't actually recline his seat so i probably shouldn't be all up in his face with my seat you know it's again we're just trying to avoid being a terrible passenger here tip number nine is to please try not to be loud and obnoxious and by this i mean talking on the phone really loudly during the demo Number one, that's gonna piss off the flight attendants and they'll probably throw you off of that flight. Number two, it will really irritate the other passengers who've already switched their phones off and put them away. So really, you're just being a douchebag <laughs> if you do that. Like, we all have important calls to take and whatever, but you knew you were about to get on a plane. You know you're not allowed to be talking on the phone right now, so just put your phone away, please. Number 10 is please try to be neat when you're in the toilet, remember, there's probably a hundred other people on this flight who also want to use the loo at some point. So if they walk in there and it's a little bit of a hot mess, it's not the nicest thing. Like, no one's gonna take the blame for it, obviously. But if you know you... if But if you know that when you went in it was clean, then try to leave it in the same state. Please try to leave it in the same state. It just, if, if you were my friend and you came over to my house and you left the toilet in the state that some people leave the aircraft toilet in, it's just like, where did your manners go? Seriously. Number 11, and this is another thing that will probably irritate the flight attendants. Um, and it's also kind of dangerous as well if you do this, but please don't leave your overhead bin open after you've grabbed something. I'm talking specifically when you're in flight and you're like en route in the air, all the overhead stowage bins are usually closed at that time. If you happen to have to stand up to take something or take a bag out of there, don't just sit down just because you know at some point you're gonna put your bag back up. No, that's not how it works. You have to close that overhead stowage again, especially if the flight attendants are busy with service and stuff. And here you are opening your overhead stowage and leaving it for them to close really that's kind of disrespectful but at the same time it's really dangerous because if we hit turbulence then all the other bags that are still sitting in that overhead stowage bin are just gonna fly out and hit whichever passenger is in front of them that's re oh my gosh that's no please just be a little bit more thoughtful guys like I'm not I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life in this video but I'm just trying to tell you how to just be a little bit more mindful, you know, and a little bit more thoughtful for the people around you in these situations. Because like I said, I am a flight attendant, I see this on a daily basis, and I'm not saying these tips just to make the flight attendant's lives easier, it's also for the other passengers, the people who are sitting next to you, in front of you, behind you, they are affected by your behavior and by your actions, so please just be a little bit more mindful and be nice. The next tip is to please remember that it's not your overhead only. Just because it's above your seat doesn't mean it belongs just to you. It is a shared compartment for multiple people's bags. You know, you can't come on board with your seven bags and put them all up there and like where other people are supposed to put their bags, you know? Firstly, 
you probably can't get on the flight with that many cabin bags let's start there but just like I've, I've seen people actually fight for the overhead bin like they've actually been like offended that someone else wants to put their bag up into the overhead bin and it's like no <laughs> This is a shared compartment, sir. So, like, you know, all of us have to be able to fit our cabin bags up there. And this is a plane with hundreds of people, possibly. So, yeah, just, you know, just, just, it's not yours. It's not yours only. It's for everybody. And generally, it's actually a first come, first serve basis. So, you can't be upset if you get to your seat and the overhead bin above you is my last tip is to please avoid getting too drunk oh my gosh it's not even just about the fact that like it's a headache for the crew to deal with you because now they have to cut you off of alcohol and try to get you to drink some water and of course you're going to like try to resist that because when we're drunk we're all feeling like you know we're on top of the world and stuff and no one can correct you no one can tell you you're wrong but it is also a headache for the other passengers and the thing is like I've said Passengers are going to try to avoid that conflict. They're going to try to put it on the crew. So the passengers who are really irritated with you won't tell you. They'll tell the flight attendant, hey, please tell Mr. Such and Such in front of me to keep it down or he's being too loud or he's being annoying, this and that because he's been drinking too much or whatever. And then it becomes just a whole thing. Like, but we could have all avoided that if you just either didn't drink that much or if you just waited until we landed and then went to a bar and drank and stuff. I mean, alcohol is so much more expensive when you're in flight. So I don't know why you don't actually spend all that money. But also, like, alcohol affects you three times as much when you're in the air than it does when you're on the ground. So if it takes you five glasses of whiskey to get a little bit tipsy when you're in a normal bar, it'll take you, like, one and a half <laughs> to get just as tipsy on the plane so please try not to push yourself a and you don't want to end up in like a fist fight with your fellow passengers because i've seen that happen so please can we just try to avoid this whole thing like and why is alcohol so important that you're willing to give up an entire flight for an extra glass because you probably will get kicked off of that flight if you show up drunk and if you end up being obnoxious and if police have to be called to come and get you off of that flight like why didn't you just wait until you got home like you know like I like i just don't get it like why are you trying to be so extra but anyway that's it for this video i hope that these tips are helpful to you and that they help you to not be a terrible passenger for your future flights i hope you guys enjoyed it please let me know if you've ever experienced or witnessed somebody being a terrible passenger in the comments below i would love to hear from you and i'll also tell you a couple of my stories as well because i've had a few <laughs> And most of them have involved alcohol, actually, to be honest. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to spread good vibes and be kind. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.